Genetics and imaging are both very exciting fields. I mean, they're both brand new and there's a lot of information in both types of data. But it's very difficult to see what genetic changes do to the brain. And so we, we all have millions and millions of base pairs in our genome. And you can imagine asking, well, how am I different from other people? How, how are these genetic changes affecting my brain and my behavior? One of the ways that we've done it with this Enigma project is we've collected 20,000 images and 20,000 genomes. And it's amazing that you can actually see the effects on the brain of single letter changes in your genome. And that's very exciting. You know, engineers and mathematicians can mine through the data and try and understand what makes the brain healthy and what makes the brain at risk for Alzheimer's disease and other disorders. And so often what we do is we find correlations with genes that might cause disease. And very often we use other databases to find out what the genes do. So if a gene causes um, migration of axons, you can begin to build a story about what that gene actually does in the brain. Um, in translation experiments like knockout mice, uh, you can look at uh, removing the gene and seeing if the function is lost. And so often the imaging establishes the correlation, it just finds a pattern of connections. But then you go to more translational experiments and, and uh, wet lab work to really delete the gene and see if that made any difference. There is a gene that was discovered recently that 1% of us have, and it's called TREM2, variant of this gene, and it doubles your risk of Alzheimer's disease. And this was only discovered very recently. It's very important. So, you know, if you think in the US, that's 3 million people that carry this very dangerous gene. So one of the things we were able to do with images is figure out how this gene affects the brain. And what actually happens is it speeds up the rate of tissue loss in the brain. So we may not notice this, and in fact, while we're healthy, this is going all the time. Now there is a positive message in all this. So if you could find these people that have that gene, and you very easily genotype them and, and find them, you could preferentially enroll them in a drug trial, and they could have all of the Alzheimer's medications available today. And you have much more power in finding an effect of the drug in these people than if you did a study of regular normal people. The reason is most normal people aren't losing brain tissue very fast. And so it's really hard to see whether a drug's working because there's not a lot happening in the brain. So one of the positive messages with genomics is you can find people at risk and do something pretty much straight away. And so it gives you a, a really a leg up into drug trials where you know, normally they'd be very expensive and you could really scan the people that are declining the fastest. The Europeans are involved in very large-scale genomics projects. Uh, the Australians we work with are very busy collecting data from twins, which is very informative from a genetic point of view. So I think it keeps giving us um, a lot of new insights and a lot of new information about what's happening uh, to the brain and research worldwide. I, I think one of the benefits with imaging is that so many people have collected data already that a grad student can come into the lab and just explore images and look at the diseases they care about. And they don't have to scan thousands of people themselves. So it's a little bit like we're standing on the shoulders of other people's work and it's, it's much more efficient.